Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Print It here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to connect to a MongoDB database in Django using the library called Django. So the nice thing about Django is it lets you connect to a database and use it just like you would use a SQL database. So really you don't have to change anything about your code. All you're doing is updating the settings and with the new settings, you will be able to use a MongoDB database without even really thinking about it because Django will handle everything for you. So in this video, I'll show you how to connect to one. So I'm on MLab, which is a MongoDB hosting service. So I'm going to create a new database and then I'm going to load up a Django project and actually connect to that database. So let me just create a free database here in Virginia. And I'll name this Connect Django Example. All right, that should be unique. And it will go ahead and create it for me. Okay, so I have the database and now I need to create a user for the database. So I need to open it up and users, add database user. So the database username, I'll just have it be Anthony, the password, uh, password one with a capital P. So create. And there we have my user. So I have my database set up on MLab. I have the connection URI. So that's what I'm going to use uh, inside of the settings. So I'll go to my Django project, which I've already created. It's a fresh Django project, so I haven't done anything to it yet. And I'll go to settings here. And I'll go down to the database. So the default database is SQLite. I don't want to use SQLite. I want to use a Mongo database. So to do that, I'll change the engine from SQLite to Django. And by the way, you have to install Django. I forgot to mention that. I have it installed already. But uh, if you just do pip install Django, so D-J-O-N-G-O, -O, you'll have it installed. And I believe it requires Python 3.6 or greater, so make sure you have Python 3.6 or 3.7. So after you have Django installed, uh, use Django as the engine here. And then the name of the database is going to be whatever you named it here. So let me copy my connection string and bring it in, and I'll just put it right here because I'll be using it again. So when it comes to the name of the database, it's the part that is after the slash. So I'll just copy this and put it in here. But in addition to this, I need more for the settings. So I need a host and I need a username and a password. So depending on where your database is hosted, you may not need all of these, but to be safe, I'll use them all. So for host, you're going to use the entire connection string. So let me just copy that and put it here in a string. And it wants you to put in your username and password. So my username is Anthony and my password is password one. That's what we just saw on the MLAP site. And this should be a string. So let me close the quote over here. And then the username again, Anthony. And then the password is password one with a capital P. So now that I have all that done, I have my database set up in Django. So now I can use it. So from this point on, everything should be familiar. It's just like using a SQL database. So since I'm in my project, well, not yet. Okay, so now that I'm in my project, I can migrate. So you know by default, Django creates some models for you, uh, basically authentication and some other things. So if I do python manage.py.migrate, it will create those models in your actual database, which is now the Mongo database. So uh, let's go here to collections and we see we have no collections at this time, but I'll run migrate and I'll wait a moment for it to do everything. So it says it's running migrations and it's going to go through the different tables that it has and it's going to create uh, each one as a collection. So the way Django works is it basically determines what Django wants to do in S SQL and then it creates the equivalent MongoDB statements for it. So instead of creating a table, you create a collection. Instead of running you know, a typical query in SQL like select star from wherever, 
Instead, you do like a collection.find. So it's just doing the equivalent. It's making that uh, conversion for you so you don't have to deal with it directly. So this should be done in just a moment. And as you can see, it's creating the admin tables, the auth tables, and then content types and sessions. So if I refresh this page, I now see a bunch of collections here. And these were created by Django. So I'll zoom in and we see auth user, Django content type, and so on. And I'll go to auth user just to demonstrate um, how the data will be at it. So right now this has no documents. So, you know, in an SQL table, uh, the equivalent of a document would be something like a row in a table. So I can create a user by creating a super user. And I spelled that, or I forgot the user at the end. So create super user. And then Anthony, my email address. And then pass password one. And it doesn't, yeah, let's bypass. Not using this for anything. Okay, so it says the super user was created successfully, which means it should have added my user into the database. So if I refresh this page, I now see one record in here, and it has my information. So I see my username, I see my email address, date joined, and so on. So like I said, this will behave just like um, a SQL database once you set up your MongoDB database here with Django as the engine, and then you really don't have to worry about anything. You may run into problems if you decide to use features that are only relevant for one, but for the typical use case for like 90% of what you want to do, um, MongoDB will work through Django. So any videos that you've seen on my YouTube channel or my website, uh, should work in terms of the database model system because they're uh, fairly common use cases. So that's it for this video. I uh, just want to mention my site if you haven't been there. I do have some Django tutorials. I have my courses, Understanding Django, Intro to Django, and Django Database Essentials. So in this particular course, uh, all the things that I do in here will work with MongoDB as well as um, an SQL database. So just keep that in mind. So I'll put a link to that in the description. If you have any questions about this video, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.